Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, viewers. Good afternoon to all the LSM staff, to the parents, and of course, to the students as well viewing this live uh, this afternoon. I hope everyone is doing well physically and mentally. I hope you had a sumptuous lunch earlier. Thank you so much for being with us this afternoon as we all rally together towards positive mental health. This is Sir Mike. Guidance Counselor of Senior High School, and I'll be your host for this afternoon. Paxet Bonum, everyone. All right. So, to all our viewers today, this afternoon, counting attendance check po muna tayo. If you are viewing as a parent, if you're a parent, please write down on the comment section the name and the section of your of your child so that you can be accounted for, so that we'll know also the turnout of the viewers in this live this afternoon. Ayan. So good afternoon po sa lahat. Sa lahat ng viewers din po ngayon, please don't forget to like and share this um, this session this afternoon para po lahat tayo will become mentally well. Ayan. So hindi lang po sa mga bata, hindi lang sa mga teachers, pati po sa mga parents na nasa kanika nilang mga bahay ngayong hapon. Pakishare po sa mga friends ninyo if you have group chats with with your colleagues, please do share para po mas malalayo ang marating ng <clears throat> um, session natin this afternoon. So to get the ball rolling, to start off, let us invoke um, the Triumph God. Um, may I present to you Teacher May, the guidance counselor for the primary level, to lead us in the opening prayer. Okay, let us remember that we are in the most holy and loving presence of God all together in the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear God, thank you for God hearing us today for this webinar. We thank you for allowing us to be here together in your name. We beseech you to bless us and our speakers as we journey on knowing the effects of social media and mental health for our dear parents. May you provide us your divine wisdom. May we see you in each one of us so that we will value each person's contribute in any undertaking. We pray that you may bless each person present here today. After this meeting, may we contribute in our own little way to make the world a better place to live in. We fervently pray for all this in this meeting this afternoon. Amen. Our Lady of Lourdes, pray for us. St. Francis of Assisi, help us to become like Christ. St. Pio of Pietrelcina, Teach us to love the crucified Christ. Blessed Jose Maria of Manila, strengthen us to become Christ's witnesses. All together, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, the Philippine National Anthem.
Thank you, Teacher May, for that wonderful prayer. And now to give us more background and ideas on what our event this afternoon would be about, to give us her opening remarks, may I present to you the guidance counselor for grades six and seven, Mrs. Esther Rentino. Thank you very much, Sir Mike. Isang maganda at mapagpalang hapon po sa ating lahat, Pax et Bonu, to the administrators, teachers, colleagues, guests, and especially to all the parents and guardians who are here with us this afternoon. Welcome. My name is Esther Rantino. On behalf of the LSM guidance team and in partnership with the Lingap Diwa, it is my privilege and pleasure to welcome you to our webinar today entitled The Effects of Social Media on Mental Health Parents Edition. We are so much delighted to have you participate and share in our first celebration of National Mental Health Week. And for the information of everyone, the National Mental Health Awareness Program is a nationwide celebration during October of each year. Hence, this academic year, the LSM Guidance Center organizes a series of webinars to raise awareness and promote the importance of mental health, not just to students, but also to employees, parents, and guardians. Likewise, we are honored to have with us once again the Lingap Diwa, which gives webinars to help us manage mental health issues at this time of the pandemic. Having said that, Lingap Diwa advocates as well on providing accessible medical and psychiatric online consultations. And so we are glad to inform everyone that our students from the junior and senior high schools had their share of the same topic that focuses on the effects of social media use on the mental health of young generations. It was held yesterday, October 8, during their guidance period. The talk made the students realize the positive and negative aspects of social media. Likewise, re-examining online habits and find a healthier balance in them. Moreover, on October 15, the grade schoolers will likewise have the chance to get more tips on reducing phone use, getting rid of smartphone addiction, lessen the impact of FOMO or fear of missing out, and improving overall mental well-being. So why do we advocate for promoting mental health awareness? because we believe that human beings are social creatures and the strength of connections has an impact on mental health and happiness. So this afternoon, we're going to learn from our Lingap Diwa speaker how social media platforms affect our mental health. Again, welcome and Pax et Bon. Thank you so much, Mrs. Rentino, for that wonderful opening remarks. Indeed, the LSM Guidance Center rallies and advocates positive mental health to the whole community from LFM and beyond. And to introduce to us our guest speaker for this afternoon, may I call on Ms. Luma Sangkai, a grade school guidance counselor. Good morning and Paxet. Good morning and Paxet Bono. I am deeply honored to introduce our first guest speaker for today's RESPAR event. Our guest speaker is a highly motivated psychiatrist driven to provide the highest quality of mental health care to all. She is a diplomate of the Philippine Board of Psychiatry and a fellow of the Philippine Psychiatric Association. She finished a clinical fellowship in consultation liaison psychiatry at Taktoksen Hospital in Singapore. After topping both written and oral psychiatric diplomate examination, prior to that, she, she served as a chief resident of the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Medicine in, in the U University of the Philippines, Philippine General Hospital. In her trust to deliver quality healthcare to all, she is an active in other aspects of healthcare. 
not just a healthcare provider, but also an educator and researcher and a social mobilizer. She is active in the academe of the Ateneo School of Medicine and Public Health, helping training the future healthcare providers of the country. She's a regular guest as a resource speaker in the various mental health care topics over the different television, radio programs, and in the following stations, ABS-CBN, DCMM, Teleradio, GMA, DCWB, Super Radio, TV5, Radio TV, PTV4, 1PH, and CNN Philippines. Presently, she is a residency training officer of the psychiatry of the Veteran Memorial Me Medical Center in Quezon City. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Joan May Perez Referial. Thank you very much po, Ma'am Luvel. Maraming maraming salamat po for your very kind introduction. Good afternoon po to everyone, to all the parents po and the members of the academe, staff, faculty of Lourdes School of Mandaluyong. Maraming maraming salamat po for having me, Ma'am Esther. Maraming salamat po for that uh, also very inspiring introduction earlier. And of course, Sir Mike as our host for today. Thank you very much po for having us once again. Ling up diwa, of course with Sir Jake. Uh, allow me po to please um, allow me po to please share my screen. Maraming salamat po once again and good afternoon sa lahat po ng parents who are with us this afternoon. Our topic po is on the impact of social media on mental health. Again po, this is ta talagang ano po, no? this is a very relevant uh, topic, uh, especially now that uh, we are using our gadgets for online classes, for work from home, at sa lahat, lahat na. So talagang we need to look at how it affects our use of social media and how it affects our mental health. Good afternoon, no, di ba? Ang ganda po ng flowers. Sino po ang mga ma mahilig po sa plants? Na? So really, uh, it's a very pretty flower. Good afternoon. It's, a, an, it's another wonderful day. Um, this will be the outline for our talk this afternoon. It's um, relatively po informal and um, laid back talk po mga parents. So please sit back, relax. But first, kamusta po ang ating mga nanay, tatay at mga guro? How are you all feeling this afternoon? I'm here po in the right most. Very happy to be with everyone. Uh, this is, of course, uh, really po, na, um, something which is uh, also very important to discuss this afternoon. Kaya ako po ay nagpapasalamat that uh, the Lourdes School of Mandaluyong has this, um, oper uh, has this platform ngayon na, that for us to be able to discuss this very important topic. Alam ko po, it's around 1.40, so please. Medyo, it's time for siesta. <laughs> Alam ko po, it's medyo difficult to stay awake. O, di ba po? Ako po ay nagkakape din. <laughs> Pareho po tayo. So, please have your coffee while listening po to the talk. In fact po, prior to uh, starting with the talk, I was telling sila, Ma'am Tin. Sabi ko, Ma'am Tin, magkakape po muna ako, Ma'am Tin, kasi I also came po from another talk. So, again, maraming maraming salamat po. Please sit back, relax, and have your coffee. So, what? Is mental health. My dear parents, have you heard of this line from the World Health Organization that says that uh, there is no health without mental health? Meaning po, there is no health kung hindi kasama ang kalusugang pangkaisipan. So always, it is a very important, it's a vital po component of overall health. And well-being, health being um, defined by the World Health Organization as a state of complete, completo, physical. So usually kasi we think of health as physical, no? but it's more than physical. In fact, it includes physical health, mental, or ating kalusugang pangkaisipan. Kasama na rin ang ating so, um, psychological and emotional well-being. And of course, social well-being, yung atin pong pakikipagkapwa-tao, relationships, our, um, how, how we are able po to connect 
conflicts and maintain relationships with our family members, with our friends, with our colleagues, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. And this uh, definition, in fact, of health has been there since 1948 pa po, up to today. So talagang ang tagal na, no? and it hasn't changed a bit. Now, my dear parents, maybe you can also reflect on this. Ano po ba ang, si- ang meaning? What is the definition of mental health? When we say kalusugang pangkaisipan, it has four very important elements. Number one, we know what our abilities are. We know what our potentials are, our skills, our talents are. Number two, we are able to cope with the normal stressors of life. Nasa stress na po ba kayo, my dear parents? So that's in fact part of the element now of mental health coping with the normal stressors of life. Number three, we are able to work productively and fruitfully. So, kaya natin gampanan ang ating mga roles bilang mga magulang. And number four, we are able to make a contribution to our community, especially to our community here at the Lourdes School of Mandaluyong and to our country in general. But I would just like to point out Two very important words here in the definition of mental health. Number one, stress. Meaning po, wag matakot na salitang stress. Uh, my dear parents, we, we can, of course, encounter stressors anytime, any day, with any person, anywhere. What's important is the second word. Ano po ba yung pangalawang word, which is very important? It's the word cope. So, ang important lang po is we know how to handle our stressors well, how to cope with our stressors or how to navigate through the challenges of life. Because there is such a thing as productive form of stress. So when our children would say na, Ma, sobrang nasa-stress na ako, Ma, kasi ang dami kong schoolworks, ang dami paperworks, meron pang research, may club. Please remember that there is such a thing as productive form of stress. Hindi po lahat ng stress is kinakatakutan. There is a type of stress which is very good kasi it will push our students, our kids to prepare, di ba? to prepare for an exam, to review their lessons, uh, do their homeworks because kung wala naman, if they do not prepare, then chill, chill lang sila then they will come to school unprepared no? for an exam. But take note that uh, there is also that, ano lang po, no? the tipping point wherein beyond that, beyond the tipping point, there's a curve na yun, it prolongs stress. Persistent stress may lead to symptoms of burnout. Burnout. Have you felt this, mga parents, sometimes? So parang there is that feeling of nalulobat. So meron po bang ganon na feeling po tayo? There is that feeling na nauubusan na po tayo ng battery. For example, at the start of each year, halimbawa, 2021, 100% pang ating battery. Na yay! It's the start of another year. Pero slowly, as the pandemic wears on, and of course, as the... Um, ano po, no? yung the months pass, parang there is a feeling na parang um, naubos ang ating battery from 100%, it becomes 75%, then 50%. In fact po, this is a real condition. Totoo. No? It's not arte-arte lamang. It's not drama-drama lamang. This is considered as a real condition by the World Health Organization. It's a chronic condition which usually results from stress related um, uh, problems or concerns, usually from the workplace. But of course, our students, our kids can also feel that. Na yung parang nalulobat na po sila. And aside from burnout, there can also be risks for having symptoms of anxiety. Ito po yung pangamba, natatakot, ang daming mga worry, overthinking, or symptoms of depression, bagsak ang mood. Para bang nalulungkot, nawawala ng energy, bagsak ang motivation, bagsak lahat. No? So there can be these risks from too much stress or prolonged stress. Now what is naman social media? Kasi we are looking at the relationship now between mental health and social media use. Social media, how many of us here, my dear parents, 
ang wala pa pong social media platforms. <laughs> o di ba? Meron po ba sa atin ang wala pang social media platforms of any kind? Now, what is social media? Social media ngayon is of course very popular, very ano po siya, na it's parang second nature na ata ng majority of the people now to have social media platforms. It's a way to interact, na because it has that um it's a new form of media which has that ability for us to interact with others from all over the globe, ba? Isang pindot lang, we can get comments or we can get replies, text messages or video calls. Another Um, another defining feature of social media platforms is that, ano po, no, that the chance for us to self-present ourselves. So, self-present, meaning uh, when someone looks us up sa Google, oh, di ba? Tinrain nyo lang ba yun, mga parents or mga teachers? Yung pag ginugoogle nyo ba ang sarili ninyo? So it's a way, no, our profile pic, our profile, um, how, how we We put our, how we arrange our mga photos, how we describe ourselves, ating mga profile. It's also a way of self-presenting ourselves, of introducing ourselves to the public. Like ano bang ating interests, hobbies, uh, what are our um, mga ano pa, no? mga, who are our friends, mga favorite uh, shows, mga ganon. So again, there is an interactive nature. It's a way to self-present ourselves and Definitely po, marami po pala. There are five groups of social media types. Before I before I made po, no, or I came up, I made this um talk po. Akala ko kasi po, ang social media refers to Facebook. Yung mga ganun, akala ko ganun sila. Facebook, Instagram, akala ko that is social media. Yun pala, it goes beyond that. And it has five types. Do you know what these five types are? Number one, social networking. So for example po, this would include Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Ako po dito, I only have Facebook and Twitter for news. Number two, online messaging. So kasama din pala yun, no? So like Viber, Messenger, WhatsApp. If you're um, siguro my age, Baka po, naabutan po ninyo yung Kakao Talk. O, oh, di ba? Sino po ang nakaabot dito ng Kakao Talk? Dati yung Kakao Talk, ganun, ganun siya. Eh. May, may mga notification siyang ganun. Video communication programs like this, what we are using now. Zoom, uh, Google Meet, Google Hangouts, Teams, Canvas. Video entertainment is also a form of social media. YouTube, TikTok, and take note, parents, online games. Kasama po siya sa video entertainment and online fora. For example, po Reddit. Diba po? Wherein we engage no, with other members ng chats, emails, vlogs, and blogs. So, this is how uh, this is how the social media platforms evolved. The evolution of social media platforms through the years. Naabutan niyo po po ba, mga parents, na yung itong pinaka-leftmost, oh, bulletin board, oh, diba? bulletin board system. And then, ako po ang naabutan ko when I was in um, grade school, no? yung magpipresent po kami, wala pang mga platforms kasi ng social media no. On. What we used to present our mga reports was Manila paper, and then we write it using we we write on it using pencil pen, <laughs> di ba? So yun ang unang ko po, unang unang ko pong form of um, communication, kasi nga it's a way of uh, ano po? No, it's a form of media. So um, Manila paper, bulletin boards, you post it, mag mag may may thumbtacks, ipo post that in just sa mga walls, so, ganon na or ipipes, is a scotch tape sa mga walls. So that's how I I started. And let's take a look at this. Oh, through the years, padami ng padami, no? So now, siguro each one of us can have siguro maybe an average of how many? Mga two or three forms of social media platforms. Um, yung yung uh, in terms po of um social media platform na yung ano po no networking. My first was Friendster. Sino po dito ang nakaabot ng Friendster? Baka ako lang pala no. <laughs> Baka pala kasi mga younger group na kayo, so wala nang nakaabot ng Friendster, but ako po. Uh, that was my first social media po na networking platform. And it has evolved through the years. So, padami na ng padami. Do you know that we are Filipinos na, in general? We have always been known as a constant social media users. In fact, pre-pandemic, 
wala pa pong pandemic, Filipinos reign supreme in terms of social media use globally. And look at this. Oh, this was in 2019. At majority of us would have used from the graph, ha, yung line graph, the topmost there, if you can read it, Facebook. So ang question here, sino po sa atin ang walang Facebook? Oh, di ba? I'm sure all of us, or siguro almost all of us would have Facebook. And the number of hours spent on social media platforms would be about 3 hours 53 minutes or more or less 4 hours average. No? Kasi uh, from another study, 4 hours 12 minutes. So how do you feel about this? Mga nanay, mga tatay, or mga moms and dads. 4 hours a day of uh, using social media, of being in front of our gadgets or our laptops and screens. And among our among our 110 million population, Filipinos, ngayon, no, it's about 76 million or 71% of the population who are uh, using social media or active diba, in, as social media users. Definitely, po, it has changed our behavior. The use of social media has changed our behavior, most notably in the way we interact. How we interact, with others, isang click lang po, isang send ng message, we are able to communicate with the people all over the globe, kahit saan man sila, kahit anong time zone, which can be a good thing and a not so good thing. Meaning po, in everything naman, there are always two sides, di ba po, to a coin. Always two sides, the not so good and the good aspects of it. So first, yung good aspect of it, communication has never been easier. Sobrang bilis, no? Like wala pang one second, you, you can get a reply already. Unlike before, may mga parents po ba dito na abutan yung ano? Yung dati na, you, it may take mga one day before we can get a reply. Lalo na if ang ating uh, kausap po is, if I'm out, we are in the province, yung ating kausap is from Manila o ang layo. One day pa, no? Before we are able to get a reply if we if we send a message through Telegram. Sino ang nakaabot po dito ng Telegram? <laughs> Parang napaka-ano ko na, no? Jurassic na ako. Nabutan ko po yung Telegram. Batang-bata pa po ako noon. But I've seen that. Yung, at saka may bayad per letter. <laughs> Nabutan nyo ba yun? Halimbawa, please call period, ganyan. May bayad pala yun per letter, kaya the shorter message, the cheaper it is. So now, it's bit, communication has been easier, but but, meron na siyang the impersonal aspect of it. It has become impersonal, eliminating the benefits of human contact because sometimes we get text messages, notes like this. Mga moms, mga dads, meron ba kayo mga texts from your kids or from your office mates na with Messages like this. Pag nakukuha niyo po ba ito, how do you feel? Ang feeling ba natin is, ano to? Aliens na ba tayo? <laughs> so we cannot understand it. Diba ako personally, ha? if you give this to me as a quiz, ngayon, I wouldn't know majority of this. I would only know the first one as far as I know. O, diba? Check ako doon. And credits to the owner. But the rest, I am so sorry. Bagsak po ako <laughs> dito. So, di ba po? So, that's how, how impersonal it has been. Na? So, and a lot of mga things that we need, we really need to learn this to keep up also with our kids na? and with the times. So, now, so that's uh, social media. Now, let's move on to the effect of social media on mental health pre pandemic. Bago pa ang pandemic, when our use of social media was at its, uh, tal talagang it was really very constant. No? And we are, we reign supreme um, among everyone else in the world. Studies, in fact, pre-pandemic have shown that social media had both positive and negative effects. So, pareho. So, mer meron po siyang, uh, again, those two aspects, the two sides of a coin. But, second, and closely following it were the respondents who said that it has so many harmful effects. So, medyo magkalapet, na? And konti lang ang nagsabi na it's positive all throughout. And some are not sure. But let's have, of course, for the sake of understanding our children better. Para mas maintindihan natin sila. And we can help our kids better, especially during this time, now when they are doing online classes, and must, uh, they spend more time in front of their gadgets, in front of their screens. Let's look at some of the harmful effects. Number one, 
Ito po ang very common na complaint or concern raised to us. Effects on sleep and sleep quality. Because of the time spent uh, in front of the screens, uh, a major cause no, of cost of excessive time on our screens is nababawasan, less time spent sleeping. How many of you would have an adolescent in your homes with one electronic device in their bedroom? Parang guilty tayo lahat, no? Parents here. In a survey, they found out that nearly all adolescents, which would include our kids, no? have at least one <laughs> electronic device in the bedroom. And what is the problem with this? Kung meron silang electronic device in their bedroom. Particularly, no, with the increase in screen time, particularly in the hours before bedtime, it can be associated with insufficient quality of sleep, uh, quantity, number of hours of sleep. Kulang! Kasi they remain awake. Sobrang gising na gising sila kasi nakababad sila sa screens. We know that the screens will emit blue light. This blue light, in fact, mimics sunlight. So para siyang sun. No? And, it, and the more we look at our screens with that blue light there, it tells our brain na umaga pa. Gabi, mag, manood ka lang ng Netflix kahit gabing gabi na kasi umaga pa kasi because of the blue light there. And lack of a number of hours and poor sleep quality. So it's really about quantity, number of hours of sleep and Poor sleep quality. That's why siguro parents in the morning kung kulang sa tulog ang ating mga anak, parang they somehow feel parang bugnutin, <laughs> moody. Sometimes medyo they're irritable. Sometimes they can focus well na in class because studies have shown that when we are sleep deprived, pag kulang po tayo sa tulog, it can definitely affect almost all of the organ systems of our body, specifically our brain functions. It can affect our memory, attention span, decision-making ability, and um, others po, no? yung planning, um, logical thinking. So ang daming affected when we are sleep-deprived. So please, parents, remember this, really. And later on, we will talk about how to address this concern about sleep. Number two, social media has been linked to higher levels. Mas mataas na, na levels of loneliness. Di ba parang, yan ang question lagi sa amin eh. You, you maintain that communication with your friends through texts and video calls, pero there is that resultant feeling of loneliness, nakakalungkot, envy, anxiety, pangamba, depression, narcissism, about me, myself, and I, and decreased social skills. Studies have shown now that the more time spent on social media, naapektohan ang communication skills of our kids. Again, because of the mga shortcuts, <laughs> yung mga letters na lang, they speak in letters, in codes, like yung mga what I presented kanina. And yung lagi nakayuko, no? looking at their gadgets, so they are not really aware na of... Um, they're, they cannot read na, yung mga nonverbal cue, facial expressions, subtle, subtle movements of the hands, feet, mga ganon. So, because lagi nang nakayuko. And how about that um, depression, anxiety? It comes from comparison. There is a, a, a concept as a social comparison theory, wherein there is the tendency na for us to compare ourselves with the posts of our friends na compare our our post of post ng ating friends na ay ano ano kaya ginagawa ni friend oh she has this new thing or they're able to eat out or they're able to travel and it may cause na some symptoms of anxiety and depression and it can also have an impact on our posts what happens when we do not get this what do you think? Pag cool, pag if we post something and we do not get all of this, no likes, no hearts, no emojis, no comments, no subscribers. And sometimes, diba, parang we feel sad. So that is what's making us feel lonely. Na parang, oh, no one likes me. I'm not good. I'm not pretty. I, I, I'm, I'm not loved. So there can be na, those effects when we base 
our self-esteem on the number of comments, likes, po- likes, comments, emojis, subscribers, and um, shares. Diba? So that may lead again, dear parents, to a decline in self-esteem among, among our kids. So please make sure uh, studies have shown on that self-esteem specifically may have an impact. This may have an impact on our female children uh, with extreme or excessive social media use, self-esteem may be affected, more affected among females than males, especially with the longer hours spent. Diba? I mentioned kayna na usually average we spend four hours diba? in the earlier part of the talk. Four hours. Dito papasok yun, no? three to five hours, females more than males. More than five hours, again, females more than males in terms of um, feeling... Um, feeling a decline in lowest self-esteem nila because of that, again, tendency to compare themselves to their friends, to their colleagues, to their classmates, etc. So that's the second um, uh, the second effect. Na? The third effect, this is also related to the others, decline in real-life relationships. Sometimes, no, even if we are all at home now, kasi um, work from home, online classes, Sometimes, even if kain na, it's time na for us to have dinner, to eat lunch together, nakayuko pa rin sa ating mga kanya-kanyang gadgets. <laughs> o di ba, how many of us here are, are guilty about this? And it may cause strain in the family. We lose that face-to-face communication with our children, with our spouse, with our mga lolos-lolas who are with us at home. So it may lead to a decline. In real life relationships, because of that focus now on our gadgets and online um, activities and friends, and it may lead to symptoms of anxiety and depression because of the perceived lack of social support. Number four, and this in fact is a very um, uh, it's it's uh, quite concerning. It's a concern for parents like you. Social media addiction. Do you know, po, now there's such a thing as addiction to social media and it may affect about 5% of young people usually, and they found out that it's usually described as potentially more addictive than the use of substances like alcohol, cigarette. Bakit? Now, the question here is, bakit siya nagiging addictive? Number one, because there is the instant gratification ngayon. Yung isang one click mo lang, you can get uh, you can get an answer kaagad. Diba? There is that gano'n. No? Na kung dati, we need to do research using encyclopedia, going to the library, looking for the codes, hanapin mo yung book, gano'n. Ngayon kasi, there's instant gratification. Or when you want to order something, ding! Pag gano'n, add to cart, meron ka agad. No? So, it can feel addictive. And of course, with those behaviors, there is that burst of dopamine. No? So, tumataas ang burst of dopamine and it can make us feel good. It can give us that pleasure, the feeling, that reward. It will activate the reward system in our brains, the reward pathways in our brains, which would um, make it, uh, uh, para ang resultant effect niya, it can be a pattern of behavior already. Kasi nga, we feel good, so we do it again. And then because we do it again, there is another burst of dopamine, then we do it again. It can become a vicious cycle leading to a pattern of addiction. Another reason for this is FOMO. As mentioned kanina po, di pa po na mention na po ito ni Ma'am Rentino kanina in her intro po. Now, FOMO can also be a cause for addiction to social media. The fear of missing out. Takot ang ating mga anak or tayo personally. Uh, we are scared no, of missing out. There's always that the thought about, ano na kaya? What are my colleagues, my office mates doing? What are they doing? Did they leave me? Did, did they not include me in their plans? And so there is that, uh, this results from that desire to continually check 
and check and check to make sure that we know what others are doing online because there is that uh, thought no, na baka they're leading more interesting lives than us. So we compare again and we want to check and check. Ano na kaya pinagagawa ni Friendship A? Ano na kaya pinagagawa ni Friendship B? So that's why we check and check. Another reason for addiction is the quote-unquote slot machine effect. If you are familiar with slot machine, parang bang, di ba, there is that parang um, chance eh, na? na parang may magno-notify na ting! Nanalo ka! <laughs> Mga ganon. Kasi kung tama yung puro strawberry, strawberry, strawberry. O, di ba? Nanalo ka. Now, in social media, it can also be like that. We become mesmerized. Para bang we become so engrossed, so engaged because of the notifications. When we hear the notifications na ting! Ay, we check ka agad kasi baka may nag-like ng ating post. Or we have a new subscriber. Or we have a new comment. Merong bagong nag-heart react sa ating post. And it may lead to addiction. And uh, we check and check and check for notifications. Number five, my dear parents, this is very serious, of course, an effect of social media use. And we really need to monitor our kids about this. Cyberbullying. This is real and it can really happen. It includes, please take note huh, and monitor your kids kasi baka lang, no, na they may be going through this on their own and they may keep silent out of fear of telling you about this. It may include sending mean texts or instant messages. Mga mean, rude, diba? pranking, hacking, spreading rumors, being rude online. Sometimes, di ba, may mga games sila and then uh, the players would give mga rude comments about them or they feel na they are not part of the group, they're not part of the game. Spreading secrets or rumors online, making false stories about your kids and pretending to be someone else to spread hurtful messages online. So please, parents, please monitor your kids po from time to time. Ask them how they are, if there's anyone um, being mean or rude to them in their platforms, in their mga games and other social media platforms. And another cause of concern, my dear parents, would be internet gaming disorder. This is, in fact, uh, already included in the most recent edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, Internet Gaming. So, mo sobra po no, yung gamit nila of the gadgets for gaming. This is part of yung kanina, uh, video, uh, sorry, sorry, um, video entertainment no, platforms. Usually among male kids, adolescents, 12 to 20 years of age, yung mga bata, and it's more prevalent among Asian countries. So, tayo yun. So, please take note that sometimes kasi, no, they're so so into gaming, online gaming, that they forget na to take good care of themselves, to eat well, take breaks, galaw-galaw, para they're not always sitting on their chair uh, to, to study, to, to rest, to sleep. Diba? We've heard of anecdotal stories na parang because of laging nakaupo. So it can affect their blood circulation, especially blood circulation to their brain. So please take note po, my dear parents. Again, this is a real concern. Now, during this time of pandemic, again, now more than ever, let's accept. Let's acknowledge po that the technology and the internet are here. To stay and really we need these tools ngayon, internet technology for us to be able to adapt we need to adapt to the current times kasi kung hindi naman natin siya i-accept i- i-acknowledge if we don't embrace technology then we will be left behind we will not be able to do our work from home our online classes for our kids so really there is also that need for us to adapt to these Changes because again, as mentioned by the song of Mr. Jose Marie Chan, in life, there is nothing as constant as change. So now we are going through changes, and definitely we need to adapt as well. During this time, in fact, people are spending more time with their devices, and the first topmost device being used is smartphones or mobile phones. I think. 
almost all of us would have it always. Para meron ba sa atin dito ang natataranta <laughs> kung hindi natin nadadala ang ating mga phones kahit sa ating mga lakad sa market, grocery, kailangan laging dala ang social, ang ating mobile phones, laptops, desktops, especially for our kids who do online classes, down to smart speakers, game consoles, again, for online gaming, and smart watches. And again, these are necessary uh, for us to be able to adapt and adjust to the quote-unquote new normal. How? How are they... Um, Uh, how are they helpful? Again, ha, kasi always naman in anything new, there are two sides to every coin, ba? Diba? Two sides to a story. So let's look muna at the positive impact. Number one, our social media platforms now are our main source of information. Do you agree? Lalo na ang mga parents, no? They, we want to, to make sure that our kids our, are safe, They are protected. So, lagi natin binabantayan, no? Information. Kamusta na ba? Is there bakuna na ba available for our kids or 17 years old below? So, it's our main source of info. And then, kung meron pwede, then we log in, we put in their names, um, yung kung saan sila pwede magpabakuna now that um, it's ano na, no? parang magsa-start na po, no? Yung pagbakuna for our kids 17 years old below so they, it's a source of information number two, do you agree with this especially during ECQ MECQ times it is in fact a safer alternative lalong lalo na sa atin po no with comorbidities for parents na hirap din to go out because of fear of exposure to our unseen kalaban na virus it's safer now to have our medications, maintenance medications delivered to our homes or um, online grocery just to, to be able to deliver to our homes for us not to go out and be exposed to anything harmful in the environment. So it's a safer alternative. Number three, during this time of physical distancing, it's important for us to use social media to keep us connected socially. Alam niyo po na talagang ngayon, no, uh, we can... Because of the physical distancing protocols, po, we can still celebrate mga milestones, uh, mga, mga, ano, no, mga important events in our lives through mga Zoom party. We call it mga e-coffee, ano ba? e-kapihan, e-duman, may mga ganon, di ba? Virtual, ano po, mga gatherings, virtual Christmas parties. Do you remember that? Nung December, I think you did this, no? mga virtual Christmas party celebration. So we are still able to engage and catch up with our families, relatives, and friends, and colleagues. Number four, it keeps us updated. Ito po, I got this. Oh, lagi po kasing ganon, no? I, ito, this is um, the number of cases, recovery. So we celebrate yung mga recoveries always for October 8th, which was kahapon. So we get this bulletin daily from the Department of Health. In fact, the WHO recommends, recommends huh, the use of social media to engage the public, facilitate peer-to-peer -peer communication, create awareness, respond to rumors we know that there are mga fake news misinformation disinformation so this is also one way no, of um, a good use of social media to keep us updated and uh, be aware of mga fake news etc and lastly among others kasi nga marami naman din ang positive impact of social media consultation from home or what we call telemedicine i'm sure we've availed of this at some point or another since starting last year. Kami po, no, in psychiatry, again, because of the fear of our patients to go to the hospitals now because of COVID or being exposed no, to the environment where there is um, mga COVID patients, COVID wards, teleconsultation now is the way to go. And uh, we can do our consultations from home from the safety of our homes. We can definitely see our doctors pa rin for us to be able to maintain our regular checkups and follow up with our doctors. So that's telemedicine, which is something good with the use of um, 
virtual platforms, online platforms of communication. Now, five yon, but th those are the top five na benefits. Let's look at the other side kasi baka magkulang tayo sa time. COVID-19 and social media's combined effect. Ano kaya? The other side of the coin. If there are the positives, what kaya are the not so good or, diba, or the negative effects? Hindi naman siguro siya side effect, but the negative effects. Side effect kasi parang gamot, eh, no? parang medication. Maybe negative effects during this pandemic of social media and COVID. Number one. Have you heard of this word, infodemic? They say that during this time of pandemic, there is another epidemic going on. And this is infodemic. It results from the barrage. Ang daming info, no? Especially when you open your social media platforms, parang malulunod tayo sa dami ng mga information, disinformation, misinformation, fake news. And studies have shown that when we have this uh, too much information, TMI, uh, too much information from media overload, the more time spent on social media during the outbreak, the worse the mental health outcome is. Na? So again, it can have an impact. Pwedeng we feel so stressed about the news that we read. We feel anxious. We feel panicky. Lalo na yung dati parang panic buying mode tayo lahat kasi may mga, mga news na nagkakaubusan, etc. And of course, loneliness. So mix. It's a mix of emotions because of media overload. Spread of in misinformation is real. It can happen, which may lead people to try mga um, unverified no, no, mga health options or mga medications, quote unquote, or mga options to help fight uh, COVID or kill COVID, mga ganon. So these are, of course, unverified medications or um, means to combat uh, this virus. Fake news abounds. Please remember that fake news may be spreading faster than the virus. Pwedeng kumalat siya ng mas mabilis. Ang daming fake news and misinformation, disinformation, which may lead to a wave of nega. Nagiging nega sometimes. How many of us, when we open it, parang nakaka-stress ang mga news. Sensationalized news, sensitive news. It can make us feel stressed, worried. Helpless because, again, of the uncertainty of the times and the lack of control. In fact, my dear parents, studies have been done about this. No? So it's backed by studies, by evidence. Um, back in 2020, last year, they came up with a survey, a study on mental health problems with exposure to social media during this time of pandemic. Tingnan niyo po, baseline, pre-pandemic, with exposure to social media, it may give us na, that feeling of depression, symptoms of sadness, anxiety. Siguro because pre-pandemic, ito yung envy, di ba? Yung na naiingit tayo. Or sometimes we compare ourselves. Or no likes means no love. Mga ganon, di ba? As mentioned earlier. That's pre-pandemic. Grabe. During this time of pandemic, look at the numbers. Times seven for depression. Tumaas exponentially for anxiety symptoms. It's times three again because of the fake news. A lot of misinformation. A lot of mga sensitive news and um, sensationalized news. So it can definitely affect our mental health during this time of pandemic. And lastly, another impact of social media using virtual platforms of communication is this. Ilan po sa atin, my dear parents, have found ourselves in a situation like this. Yung ganun, oh. Yung meron tayong mute, unmute, raise hand button, emoticon button, and it can go back to back to back to back to back. Sometimes it may end until 11 p.m. on a weekend. Natrayin yun na ba yun? This phenomenon is called Zoom fatigue. 
it's real. It has been recognized po as a problem now. Not just for us parents who are doing back-to-back-to-back-to-back meetings for our work, but also for our kids. Na? Again, hindi lang siya about Zoom. It could encompass all forms of virtual platforms of communication like Google Meet, Hangout, Canvas, Teams, etc. There is that feeling, oh, di ba? There is that feeling of uh, fatigue. Kaya nga siya Zoom fatigue. No? Pagod na pagod. Exhaustion after all of these meetings. Parang you don't want to do anything else kundi matulog ka na lang. <laughs> Gusto mo lang matulog. Ayaw mo na maglaba, magluto, magplancha kasi sa sobrang pagod with with the online platforms of meeting, classes. Gusto mo na lang magpahinga. And there can be that feeling of frustration. Ilan sa atin dito, we feel frustrated pag merong lagi ka, lagi. Or nawawala ka, we can't hear you. It's your choppy. Mga ganun. <laughs> Di ba? Sometimes it can make us feel frustrated. Ako personally, as a teacher, Pag, pag sinasabi ng student ko na gano'n na, Miss, you are laggy, you are choppy, we cannot hear you. Ay, nagpapanik ako. <laughs> Kasi paano na lang to? How can I deliver my lessons clearly? So, mga gano'n. Na. So, in fact po, again, ha, this has been recognized by researchers and professors from Stanford University. Kasi again, they recognized and they wanted to measure how much fatigue people are experiencing in the workplace or classes. From too much back to back to back to back video conferencing, they came up with a Zoom exhaustion and fatigue scale. And some of the questions here are: How exhausted do you feel? Pagod na pagod ba after video conferencing? How irritated do your eyes feel? Kasi nga, digital eye strain is real, di ba? Have you felt that the more na you gaze or you look at your screens, dry eyes? It can be red, redness, dry eyes, or for some, it becomes blurry, yung vision. Those are some of the symptoms of digital eye strain. You avoid anything else, doing anything else after prolonged mga back-to-back-to-back meetings. All right? So those, those are some of the not-so-good impact of too much use or excessive use of social media. So we are now down to our last um, uh, topic which is what to do. How do we navigate through this? Now, kasi we know that there are positives, the not-so-good impact, but uh, media, social media, technology, the internet will be here to stay. And we need to accept that, to acknowledge that now more than ever, we need it for us to be able to thrive and do our tasks, work, and online classes. What's important is to... Find the balance. In, in life naman po, it's really important to find the balance in everything. Uh, it's not always a yes or a no. There can always be that gray area in between where compromises can be made. So how? Make sure that we know what is adequate social media use versus excessive. Kailan nga ba? Nagiging excessive. So when we know the balance, this is then the key to maintaining mental health. How do we find the balance? Number one, make a conscious effort. Track your social media use. Buti na lang ngayon, our phones have trackers. Di ba? Meron silang ganun. Halaka, you've uh, reached your limit for social networking. Uh, sites or you've reached your limit for videos na mga mga entertainment videos like mga YouTube mga ganun. and approach social media use mindfully look at how it affects your behavior nakakaapekto na ba sa trabaho nakakaapekto na ba siya sa quality of your work sa productivity natin sa ating mga opisina before you post anything Approach it mindfully. Ask yourselves, why? Why do I need to open my gadget? Why do I need to post this? Again, we do not want to be the bearers of fake news. Huh? So think before you click para hindi po tayo ang nagiging source of misinformation, fake news. Baka pala, no? tayo ang magiging source ng anxiety ng ibang tao. <laughs> so, ayaw man naman natin po ng ganon. So, always ask yourself why. Number two, limit 
ito. Limit, set limit, set boundaries. When and where you use social media, as mentioned earlier, kung kaya po, no gadgets, no TV in our bedrooms because we know that the blue light can be stimulating and it can affect our sleep quality. For some naman po, no? they set mga gadget-free zones in their homes. So sa dining table, pag time to eat, ganon, mas maganda po, no gadgets in the dining table para we engage face-to-face with our sons, with our daughters, with our lolos, lolas, moms, dads. So mas maganda pa rin po, nothing beats face-to-face interactions, and digital detox is the key. Detox, meaning you may set limits, uh, maybe turn off on some days, kung kaya, or turn off notifications. Para pag kahit na we are asleep, na-feel you na po ba yun, my dear parents? Pag sometimes tulog na tayo sa gabi, tapos biglang may ting, tapos nakakagulat. <laughs> Kasi pala, hindi na turn off ang notifications. No, nagugulat tayo at nagigising. And it also may affect our sleeping patterns. So we can turn it off. Ako po, pag I'm not on duty in the hospital, I turn off my notifications beginning at 9 p.m. until 5 p.m. 5, 5 p.m. <laughs> 9 p.m. 9 p.m. until 5 a.m. the next day. Para at least, na pag hindi duty, my brain cells can relax, recuperate, reset, and recharge. So I hope you can also do that. Think before you click. Verify information. Make sure that you are able to filter and verify. Get information from reliable, credible sources like WHO. CDC or the Center for Disease Control and DOH. Yun lang po sana. These are the most credible sources of information. Number four, use social media for you and not against you. Do not let it take control over you. So use it positively and as a way of coping and staying connected. Healthy lang bale, healthy. If you feel na ang daming mga nega, sometimes when we open our gadgets, so parang ang daming mga sa feed natin, ang daming mga nega, mga nega toxic um, comments, uh, posts. Now is the time to prune. <laughs> Alam niyo po yun, yung sa mga nagpa-plants po, no? they prune, they cut off, di ba? They cut off mga not-so-healthy stems. You know? Now is the time to unfollow, mute, or hide contacts. Ako po, I do not unfriend. Ha? Kaya binilugan ko rin yung unfriend. Personally lang yun. <laughs> I do not unfriend. I just unfollow siguro or put them on mute. Kung may mga group chats na I think naman it's not really necessary to engage in those group chats na napasama ako, I put them on mute or in archive ko sila, tinatago ko sila. Just for us to really, no? again, part of detox din also siya and we do not get to be bombarded by a lot of these mga informations at this time. Lastly, lastly po, and this is the most important, I think, na, not but not the least. Stop social media from replacing real-life connections. Iba pa rin po, no? Iba pa rin po for mothers and dads. Iba pa rin po yung face-to-face, skin-to-skin, contact, bonding, with your children. Ibang-iba pa rin po yun. When we do that, yung face-to-face hugging, kissing, um, carrying them, bubuhati natin sila, lalaruin natin sila without gadgets, the use of gadgets, it can boost the levels of oxytocin. Oxytocin is the bonding hormone and it definitely po ang result noon, it will lead to a stronger bond between you and your family members, your children, Stronger bonds, stronger relationships, and again, it will promote. Ano pa rin po? No? It will promote the strong uh, bond and relationships filled with love, comfort, support, and it will make your children feel safe and secure always when there is that skin-to-skin contact and communication, face-to-face communication. All right. So key points for from this talk this afternoon. Number one. Let's embrace (laughs) social media. Let's embrace technology. We have to acknowledge and accept that social media is an important tool as we progress 
and navigate into this new normal. Again, change is a part of life. This is one of the changes now, and let's embrace it. Number two, use social media responsibly and healthy lang as a healthy means of coping. Before you decide to open, share, or um, post anything, a Approach it mindfully. Ang question always is, bakit ko nga ba gagawin ito? Bakit ko kailangan mag-post? Bakit ko kailangan mag-share? So, uh, uh, reflect on that first before you do anything. And think before you click. And if you feel overwhelmed, sometimes now we can feel overwhelmed, stressed, anxious from all of the things we read online, the negativity, misinformation, fake news, disinformation. Digital detox is the key. Mas maganda po, let's uh, turn off notifications, no gadgets, no TV in the bedrooms to protect the quality and quantity of our sleeping patterns. Nothing set digital free zones in your homes. Nothing beats skin-to-skin, face-to-face, real-life connections. And with that po, maraming maraming salamat po. Lourdes School of Mandaluyong, especially to all the parents, the admin, the staff, and the educators and members of the guidance and counseling section present this afternoon. Mabuhay po kayong lahat. Salute po. I know that you are all doing your best, my dear, dear parents. Salute to everyone po and God bless you all. Thank you very much po. Thank you po. Unmute, sir. Ah, ako ba yeah. Thank you so much, Doctora. Thank you so much for that wonderful and informative sharing. I'm sure a lot of parents watching us this afternoon were enlightened of the effects of um, social media to our mental health. Not just the mental health of their sons, but their own personal mental health as well. And I'm sure po may mga iba siguro sa kanila na may mga questions. So my dear parents, viewers, this afternoon, if you have questions, feel free to comment them on the comment section and we'll do our best to um, answer and respond to your inquiries. But before, while we're waiting for the questions from the audience, we have prepared some questions also for our dear speaker this afternoon that can be helpful in enriching what we have learned for today. So allow me, Doctora, to ask some questions. Okay lang po ba? Some of these questions were... Yes already po! Asked. Yes, Sir Mike! Yes. Okay. Some of these questions po were asked already yesterday from the session with the students, no? Oh, yeah! So, okay. We feel lang din siguro that it can be also vital that we share this also to the parents para po um, they can also be enlightened as well. Yes. So first question, Doctora, what can you say about the Filipino culture or a stigma where mental health issues are treated as maarte or nag-iinarte and how should we take that or somehow change that kind of thinking? Yes. In fact, Sir Mike, that is a very um, relevant and very good question because we know, no, let also, let's also acknowledge and uh, uh, acknowledge and accept that uh, up to this time ngayon, there is still that stigma uh, surrounding mental health. And, uh, but what's important is simula po, nung napas na po yung mental health law in June of 2018, it has been better. We can feel that. We could feel that. Because if there had been more mga mental health awareness talk similar to this similar to this platform so really po ako i'm very happy kaya salute po to Lourdes school of mandaluyong for having platforms like this for us to be able to understand mental health better that number one mental health concerns are true totoo po sila valid true and these are not arte arte lamang these are not drama drama dra drama drama lamang because there are very strong biological components to it, underlying biological components to it. Like, for example, now in our brain, there can be the effects of mga neurotransmitters which are affected. Uh, bumabagsak ang levels ng serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, epinephrine, uh, endorphins, which can affect our mood. Now, the resultant uh, effect of that would be it can affect our mood, mental health, and mga neuro 
anatomic and neurophysiologic changes as well as shown from PET scans, mga imaging. So there is there are really very strong biological um, components to why we are at risk sometimes to this mental health concern. So sana po mapag-usapan natin. Let us not be afraid to talk about it in fora like this today. And remember po na uh, the, the feelings, the emotions of our children, of course, are very real. They, these are true emotions. And what's important is that as parents, as educators, as members of the guidance team, we are always there to reassure them. Na, na we have, they have our support, our guidance, our unconditional um, love as parents. And of course, uh, let's work together. Ito yung important then also na which I would like to highlight to our parents. It's all is a collaborative effort. So by the school, by the parents, of course, everything for the benefit or um, in service or for the benefits of our children, always with our children in mind. Yes, thank you, Doctora. And I know that my fellow counselors can also attest to this, that yeah. with um, you know the information campaign, the psychoeducational approach that Learn School of Mandaluyong Guidance Center provides, we also have campaigns like this for the students. However, sometimes parents can be resistant to the issues about mental health because of what the stigma that we mentioned. They feel uh, that it's also, you know, sabi nga, nag-iinarte, or they are still not receptive to that. So we're continuously pushing for information and education. So thank you once again for being part of of this endeavor from our unit. And also, Sir Mike, I would just like to add, no? Kasi, baka lang kasi, it may add to the stigma na when we say mental health, yung extremes na kaagad, no? Na parang arte-arte lang yan, hindi naman yan. But let's also remember that um, mental health kasi it falls in a continuum. Kaya very important pa rin to, to talk about it for promotion, mental health promotion, for us to be healthy always, to maintain that positive mindset, make sure that our coping skills are good. So prevention pa rin is the key. Mental health promotive activities in school can also help. And of course, yung daily or not daily, regular collaboration always as part of the activities to bring us up to closer with one another. The collaborative effort is always very important to prevent all of these uh, mga ganito mga uh, misunderstanding or misinformations. Right. So who, it's always in our in the best interest, of course, of the students to be yes. proactive. Correct. Mas maganda yung proactive muna before reactive. Di ba? Yes. <laughs> correct po. Correct. Yeah. So next question po tayo. How should we, the parents, respond to our sons exhibiting symptoms of negative mental health? Mm-hmm. from a, one of the parents. Yeah, of course. Yes, this is truly understandable, ma'am or sir, po, no? the, for the one who sent this message. It's very important po if we notice uh, mga changes in behavior. Yun po yung mga first kasi po no? na, na, napapansin, like changes in sleeping patterns, eating patterns, um, decline in self-care for some kasi napapansin natin na parang, parang hindi na masyadong nakakaligo or the, the child has become more isolated they refuse to come out of their rooms or there is a decline, a not- noticeable or observable decline in their levels of functionality, productivity, performance in class, be it academically or with extracurricular activities, then mas maganda po, let's uh, maintain open lines of communication. Uh, communication is always the key po. Uh, make sure that we are able to tell them, express our concerns sa kanila. Express lang na, we anak, I'm concerned about this, no? na parang napansin ko lately like this. So objective lang din po. No? Let's stick to the facts, objective, na what has been observed, express your concern. And uh, make sure po na we do not make any ba- mga judgmental statements. So bowel judgmental statements. Uh, if they open up to us, if they feel na, na, with the open lines of communication, they feel na Ay, I'm safe, I can tell this to my mom or dad. Mas maganda po, we do not compare. Na na, ay, wala yan. Or say something like, wala yan, si ate mo nga, nakayanan yon Or ako nga, during my time, kayang-kaya ko yan. Wala yan. Let's not make any comparisons po. Kasi again, 
we all have our own stories to tell, our own uh, struggles. So uh, the the feelings not then kanya kanyang feelings no of our sons daughters are real for them it's uh, th- these are very valid and let us never invalidate or dismiss their emotions so and make sure that we are always there ready to listen and give them our unconditional love and support especially during this very challenging times thank you doctora that indeed was is very concise no yun po talaga yung kailangan natin eh. to yeah. make the feelings of the of the students of the children valid because Correct. otherwise it will just make matters worse diba po? Yeah. and if ano kasi if we make mga mga judgmental comments or if we compare mga ganun baka lang po no the, the effect of this is that they might pull away from us and they baka later on they might uh, just keep it to themselves na lang because again there is that feeling na they were invalidated or they were not really heard no yung active listening kasi talaga is very important and they can also feel that so active listening is the key and empathy empathy po my dear parents is it's really that um putting ourselves in the shoes of our kids feeling the pain that they are going through if they feel na mahan a break up kami then feel that no judgments and then let's feel it no if they cry we also are one with them let them feel now we are one with them through the pain ma ah, ganun po the strategy yeah and thank you doctor next question po how can we encourage our sons to interact personally in order to limit the use of social media yung katulad po ng sabi niyo kanina skin to skin pa rin personal pa rin yeah. the best so how can Um, parents encourage their children to interact personally more. Yes, of course. During this time that it's still bawal, no face-to-face pa rin po in the classes and we are all um, restricted pa rin in our movements, we are all at home, mas maganda po if you set, if we set within uh, our homes po, mga, again, gadget-free zones na may zone, halimbawa, dinner table, dining table, wala, dinner time, nothing, no gadgets there para you can talk, it's an opportunity for you to ask, uy, kamusta? Ano ba ang mga challenging subjects niyo this sem? Mga ganon. So, ask open-ended questions para it will stimulate more conversation. Hindi yung mga yes or no lang po na question. Open-ended are better questions. Number two po, If really, uh, baka kasi at that may mga certain age din na gustong gusto nila to play online games, what the parents can do is to play with their kids, di ba? Para let's do co-viewing kung kailangan lang pag ang, 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 ang how we spend our weekends is to watch, for example, watch a TV show or watch a movie, then let's do it together. So co-viewing or you play with your kids. Uh, yung, di ba may mga team games ngayon na online na halimbawa, may team sila, then team up with your kids. O, sabay kayo, ano, play together or engage with them through kung mas younger children naman, yung interactive games nila. O, na, for example, but I'm not promoting yung itong specific app. Ha, but, ba, o, anak. O, so, how will Dora cross the bridge? O, so, ganun. No? So, it's also a form pa rin of, um, of uh, bonding with your kids. O, what will she do? What's inside her backpack? Mga ganun. So, always pa rin, do things together as much as you can. Ayan, o nga po. So, yung mga parents din, matututunan din nila yung interests ng mga yes. anak nila. So, they can also, you know, relate to what their, their, their sons are going through. Thank you. Yes. So, next question po. What tips can you give in order to monitor online interactions to avoid anonymous chatting, scams, catfishing, etc. Mm-hmm. That is really very important as mentioned earlier, no? Kasi yung uh, it's a real concern, a uh, cyberbullying uh, through all of the forms na mentioned earlier. So what's really important is again maintain open lines of communication with your sons and daughters. Uh, mas maganda po monitor, monitor the sites that they visit. Uh, I, I think there are some uh, mga Um, ang tawag doon, mga uh, adjustments, or how do you call that? Mga settings, wherein you can also limit yung mga sites na where they're able, sites that they're able to access. And of course, mas maganda pa rin, talk to them. Uy, kamusta? Ano ba yung mga ano? Sino ba yung mga nakakausap mo? Tell me, anak ha, pag naroon nang aaway sa'yo, para ako ang aaway sa kanila. Mga ganon. But uh, of course, it will give them that feeling nga, na um They need to be safe always. Rem- reminders are very important na to keep safe 
online bullying, online harassment is real. And of course, there are also laws for that now which can protect our kids. Or uh, we are all protected by laws against cyberbullying or online bullying and cyber, and tawag dun, cyber mga crimes. Yes, kasi syempre po, di ba, ibang bata ngayon, pag, pag online, they're usually at, in their rooms by themselves. Yes. And the parents wouldn't know who they're talking to. Correct. So, correct. maganda rin po na, na monitor talaga. Yes. Monitoring talaga. And you can ask them. Show your concern always. Show your concern always. Anak, wala bang nang-aaway sa'yo? Yung iba kasi, the younger they are, they say, no? they, tell, they tell their moms, Ma! May nang ano sa akin, someone is bullying me, mga ganon. Pero yung medyo ad- adolescent na hindi na masyado. But remind them, constant reminder also of uh, how to keep themselves safe uh, while in the online world. Ayan. Thank you, Doctora. That is indeed correct. Yes. And I think this is our last question na po. Opo, yes po. Considering social media algorithms, what can we do to monitor its influence to my own and my son's views, values, and decisions. Ayun po. Paano po natin mara-regulate yung, um, syempre with the uh, yeah. influences po ng, let's say, politics, ah. or yung toxicity ng social media. Yes. So, paano po natin, paano po ma-address din po ng parents yun so that it will not affect the their own and their son's um, decision-making processes negatively. Correct, correct. In any situation naman po, no? in any aspect, there is such a thing as what we call um, uh, a spectrum. A spectrum siya lagi. Na? So uh, any behavior, any form of activity, it always falls in a spectrum. So there can always be that good aspect to it, good side to it, and the not so good. Mas maganda po, we also are aware, no? ano ba yung mga not so good uh, impact of this news? And baka meron din something good. What's important is to find the balance. Baka there is a point there where we can make compromises compromises can be made we can look at the we can view these two um, ends of the spectrum objectively and then come up with option one option two option three find the middle ground Para naman po, we are still informed we keep informed about the positives and not so good and then look for options because in life it's not all black and white, black or white. Diba? There is always that gray area in between wherein we can come up with options, find the common ground, and work through some compromises. Yeah, thank you, Doctor. So indeed, communication still is the key. And para yes. Nice. And Opo. for the students and the parents also to be constantly informed. And engage and with engage. the kids. Yes. Thank you so much, Doctora. Once again, you have given us a lot of insights regarding our topic this Thank afternoon. You. I hope this won't be the last. Opo, of course, anytime. <laughs> One text lang po ni, nila, ma'am, nila, sir. Ka, uh, we are here, ni Sir Jake. <laughs> Thank you so anytime. much for being anytime our po. partners in promoting positive mental health, not just to the school community, but generally to the whole community. As well. Ayan. Thank you once again, Doctora. Anytime. So in, Always so our pleasure. To, yes. Opa. Thank you po so much ulit, Doctora. Ayan. So, in order to serve everyone better, uh, an evaluation form will be shared in the comment section. So, to all viewers here this afternoon, please do click on the evaluation form and fill it out so that we'll know your thoughts. So that we can also constantly improve our programs and services to the whole community. Ayan. So to award the certificate, may I now call on Ms. Christine Guevara, our guidance coordinator, to award the certificate. Ms. Christine. Okay, thank you, Sir Mike. Once again, thank you, Dr. Joan, for sharing a lot of insights about how, how our parents can further help their children manage the use of social media and technology. So we really appreciate how Dr. Joan has taught us a lot during today's webinar and, of course, our previous parenting workshop held last August 28. I think some of our viewers have attended our parenting workshop last time and they are showing their appreciation through the comment section, all right? So with that, we would like to present this certificate of appreciation. Allow me to read the citation.
very much po. Thank you very much po talaga. And uh, really, I'm very happy po. I'm truly humbled and honored to be with you uh, this afternoon. Of course, uh, with Sir Jake Paul from Lingap Diwa. Maraming maraming salamat po. And tomorrow, October 10, we are celebrating the World Mental Health Day. So yeah, this is talagang very ano po, no? timing and very fitting po for our celebrations tomorrow. So maraming maraming salamat po. And I wish you all the best. Good health po and uh, God bless you all. More power for this school year 2021, 2022 and beyond. Maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you so much ulit, Doctora. And of course, to our partners in Lingap Diwa, we also appreciate everyone who has been with us throughout the whole afternoon, throughout the whole webinar. Thank you so much for staying and um, being with us and continuously supporting the programs of the LSM Guidance Center. So once again, the evaluation form has been shared in the comment section. So feel free to fill it out so that we can also know uh, your thoughts about our webinar this afternoon and if you have other suggestions for future topics. And now to also recognize our partner, in this webinar, Lingap Diwa, may I call on Sir Jake to give us a short message. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much po. Good afternoon, Sir Mike. Ma'am Tintin, good afternoon. Isang magandang hapong sa inyong lahat po. Uh, once again po, ako po yung lubos na nagpapasalamat sa lahat po for having us. Uh, ako at si Dr. Joan with uh, in this uh, very important activity po in preparation for tomorrow's World Mental Health Celebration po, no? Uh, at this point po, I would like to take this chance po to sort of give a, a sort of a reminder po because I understand this is not my first time po to speak about the Lingap Diwa Advocacy Program, eh, but for the benefit of those first timers who have just joined us this afternoon po, uh, the Lingap Diwa po, as I already mentioned po, is an advocacy program that aims to promote mental health awareness po. That is the first part of our advocacy po. And the second part is, what we offer also is the free patient online consultation. Now, I would like to uh, sort of uh, give importance to this project, Project Paul, because I'm sure you will agree with me, dear parents, Paul, that uh, one of the things that really uh, gives, uh, proves to be a big challenge to us, especially to us parents, Paul, that the concerns uh, about our children, Paul, we might be observing some of our children might be they are very stressed, anxious, no? Tama po yung sinabi ni nila kanina na hindi po inerte yan, pag iinerte, no? Kung baga kulang sa pansin, no? Alam mo yun? Part of, 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 of growing up, hindi po, no? These are the things that we should give attention po. That's why we are here po, sa Lingap Diyo po, to provide support to our parents po, no? Okay? By, 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 virtu uh, by virtual application po, by virtual uh, platforms, we can help you connect okay, your, your, your children, members of your family po, to our uh, specialists po, to our doctors. Like for example po, Dr. Joan, our speaker for this afternoon. It is quite easy po to, to, uh, uh, to have this connection. Paano po? All you have to do is to text me okay, or to coordinate with the guidance counseling department of New School of Mandaluyong po, through the help of Ma'am Tim po, uh, alam po ninyo, we are in constant uh, coordination po with communication with with, uh, with the officers and staff of the guidance counseling department of, of LSM po on, on ways that we can help, no? Uh, help each other po address uh, things that is kumbaga, that is, uh, that concerns about mental health po, no? Okay, uh, as I've said, you can coordinate with the guidance counselor and counseling department, or I can give you my number. It's 0915-791-0109. Ganun lang po. Ang sabi nga po lang, text, text lang po tayo, no? Okay, you, you can easily reach me through this number po, and then I will be the one to have, uh, provide you a link, no? A link, no? Uh, which can easily open, just click on that link po, and you can easily register your, your patients po, no? To our program po, for, for, uh, the, so that we can arrange an appointment for your patient po with our team of specialists po. Okay, I would like to echo po yung sinabi ng doktora kanina po, no? Since we're talking about our children, the cooperation, the full cooperation of the parents are, are, is very much critical, very much essential to the success 
uh, of, of providing support and help, probably help to our children. Po. We will really need your support and active uh, involvement po, when it comes to providing quality mental health care po, to your children. Okay, so ilan po. So thank you very much po for listening. Maray po salamat. Nandito lang po ako to, to receive your request or messages from our counseling department po. Counsel, uh, guidance counseling department po. Maray po salamat sa inyong pakikinig. Sir? Thank you so much, Sir Jake. Maraming marami pong salamat sa constant na partnership with having the same advocacy in mind. Kami din po sa guidance center at talaga ay nagpapasalamat at lagi po kayo nandyan para sumuporta. Ayan. So with that po, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for once again being with us. Thank you for sharing your time to learn to learn more about mental health. And let me take also this opportunity to promote the services also of the Guidance Center. If you notice any behavior that you feel may be attributed to negative mental health, please feel free to reach out to the guidance counselors of your sons. You may... Um, like this page, the LSN Guidance Center page. You may send a message through there. And our, even our contact details are also in the page. So feel free to reach out. And we'll do our best to uh, respond to the mental health needs of your sons in order to promote a positive mental health atmosphere, not just in face-to-face -face, um, classes, but even online. So once again, thank you so much. So to give us her closing remarks, may I present to you the guidance counselor for grades 8, 9, and 10, Ms. Nivelle Dumlao. Accept volume, everyone, especially to our administrators, teachers, colleagues, viewers, and our dear parents and guardians who are with us today. It had been an enriching and fruitful afternoon thanks to our invited speaker, Dr. Joan Rifarial, and to Lingap Diwa, LSM Guidance Center's partner in bringing this informative webinar live to us this blessed afternoon. Indeed, there is no health without mental health. That's why it's really essential for all of us, especially for our dear parents and guardians today, to make sure that our mental health is also on our list of priorities. Social media, a platform of expression, connection, information, entertainment, service, and even education, as we heard from Dr. Referial, is just right on our fingertips. And despite the convenience it provides, it can also be a source of stress, burnout, unproductivity, addiction, and other mental health concerns once we let social media consume too much of us and of our time. What's worse, it could also make most of our social interactions impersonal. So, as we live inevitably through the digital world, especially during this time of pandemic, may we use social media responsibly and in moderation, practice digital detox, and remember that we use social media for us and not against us. Again, in behalf of the LSM guidance team, We'd like to thank everyone for being with us today as we pursue a greater mental health awareness as one community, not only for us, but also for the people around us. We hope to see you and your support again in the future activities and projects of the LSM Guidance Center. Until then, stay safe, God bless, and Pax et Boni. Thank you so much, Ms. Dumlao, for that uh, very heartwarming closing remarks. So once again, we would like to extend our gratitude to everyone who's here with us this afternoon, to the administrators and teachers who are very supportive in this endeavor, and of course, to the guidance team and the production team that made this webinar happen. So thank you so much to everyone. So once again, I would like to advocate that we are here for the students, not just us, the teachers and the counselors, but also the parents. So let's be partners in continuously promoting positive mental health. So with that, thank you so much um, to everyone again for being here this afternoon. This has been Sir Mike, the senior high school um, guidance counselor, saying thank you, a blessed afternoon, Paxet Bonum. The Closing prayer will be led by Master Luis Andre Barcelino, followed by the singing of Lourdes Forever. Thank you so much. Paxet Bonum once again. Let us bow our heads and remember that we are in the holy presence of God.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we thank you for making this day successful. We are grateful that you were with us throughout this webinar. With your presence, we were able to have a productive day. Thank you for enabling us to get to be together for this activity. May you continue guiding us as we go our separate ways. Help us put into practice the learnings we gained from this activity and through this make a positive change in the lives of the people around us. Bless everyone that is here with us, Lord God, who chose to spend their Saturday afternoon with the LSM community. May you bless us, O Lord, the participants, our dear speaker and guests, all the members of our community, and bless our family and friends, especially during these trying times. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Lady of Lourdes, pray for us. St. Francis of Assisi, help us to become like Christ. St. Pia of Petrolcina, teach us to love the crucified Christ. Blessed Jose Maria of Manila, strengthen us to become Christ's witnesses. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With pride and honor, let us sing the Lord's hymn. With fervor and love, let us all sing the Lord's forever. Singing praises, let the ears freely sound our voices, and to ring be our fealty to the school we love so well. Though the years our paths may sever, sons of words will ever be, and with joy the praises sing so proud. Alma Mater, hail to thee. Conrad's dear, let the song echo clear, loud and long. Let us send our tongues in praises, let tears free sound. May sever, sons of Lords will ever be. 